Hi there folks, Borislav247 here with another Days Gone video. And on this video I'm going to show you two fantastic locations in which to easily take out the Beaver Marsh rest stop horde. Now, the first location is an untouchable spot when you actually manage to get onto it. And I will be perfectly honest folks, I have not discovered this particular uh, area myself. I have seen this in two or three other Days Gone videos, but it's that good, I just had to include it in this one. But I'm showing it first just to get it out of the way. Uh, basically, you want to approach the horde via this side, and then you're looking to basically mash the X button while you're at the corner of that area, and you will eventually climb up onto uh, this section. And once you're on this section, you are untouchable, folks. You can pretty much take out the horde in any which way you see fit. Just make sure though folks that you don't throw down any explosives that are likely to get you hurled off uh, the position here. Uh, you ideally want to be just using napalm molotovs or normal molotovs. That way you will get high ratio kills because the entire horde is basically right beneath you. And you also have the luxury that you can basically just take them all with gunplay as well from here because they are so nicely congregated there below you. And that's uh, precisely what I intend to do for uh, pretty much the rest of this horde. I've reduced the numbers already um, with an APAM Molotov. That will probably have taken out about, around about 60 of them given that, uh, how uh, compact they were down there. And this horde is 125 strong folks, just so you know. And already, this water is just about done. I would say they'll be lucky if there's about six or seven of uh, these bad boys left. Right, at this stage I could actually come off uh, this location and just take them out with gunplay on the, uh, on the ground. But, as I wanted to ideally take out uh, this entire horde from this one point, I'm just going to use an attractor here and then just a normal Molotov. And this should take care of the last of them, folks. There we go. Job done. Right then, folks. On to location two. And this one is a beauty. I'm actually going to show a few runs uh, for taking out the Horde at this location because you can have a lot of fun with this uh, particular area that I go to. And I'm going to start with what I consider is the ideal kill method uh, using this area. Because it's very important that you don't get the entire horde uh, onto this particular point. Because although this area does give you a lot of protection, it's not a completely untouchable area. If the entire horde gets to where I am, uh, they can overrun you purely because of their numbers. But from here, I've got the attractor down there. I want one Napalm Molotov set off. That's just going to reduce the numbers nicely. And then from here, as long as I keep at it with um, the gunplay and just make sure that the numbers that are coming up aren't too large, then this board is a piece of cake. And I'm going to show you the protection that you actually get here because here we go. I need to reload the weapon. There you go. They can't touch you. It's only when they have the larger numbers that they start piling up on top of each other and finally get to you. But this horde is just about done. Right then folks, on to run number two and this is my personal favourite. It's gunplay only. Uh, basically I'm going to approach the horde from the same side again and um, just as before, looking to get their attention but from uh, this point here, I'm just looking to get over to this area as quickly as possible, get off the bike quickly, and then just basically make my way up to uh, the safe location. And then from there, I'm just going to go to town on the horde as they show up. And as I said before, folks, really, as long as the numbers are not super large up on top here, you are in no danger whatsoever. Uh, I will show after this run just what happens if the entire horde does actually manage to get up here uh, and just how they react because you're never likely to see it unless you actually just 
Let the horde up, but don't fire any weapons. However, all that being said, this horde is just about done. And there's not much to it, folks. This location is as good as it gets. Right, folks, I did say I would show exactly what happens if you let them up in large enough numbers and don't do anything about it. Um, as well as this, I just wanted to show this because it does give you an idea of just how good a location this is. Because it takes them a good solid 30 seconds before I actually get killed here. Um, once they're large enough numbers, they basically start to clamber over World War Z style and eventually they do get to you. Right then folks, on to run number three, and uh, as the name suggests here, I'm going to have a little bit of fun with the remote bombs. Because I haven't used any yet, and this area is crying out for the use of remote bombs. Uh, now, as you can see, I am approaching the horde from a different direction. This is uh, very handy, because uh, obviously I'm not going to get seen by the horde from here. And uh, it's also very handy in case you beat any wildlife like I just have. You're far enough away, basically, that the horde won't hear um, the gunshots. So, now that I'm up here, uh, I'm basically going to try and place a total of 12 remote bombs. Probably overkill. Wouldn't be required. Uh, not all 12 of them anyways, but uh, just for the sake of this video, I'm just going to lay down as many as possible. And I'm pretty sure it's 12 that... Uh, I managed to get out in total here, so this won't take too long. And then basically, once I've got all these uh, bombs in place, I'm going to head uh, over the, the wall area there and then get the horde's attention with gunplay. I will probably take out quite a number of them and then just basically whatever's left at the top, they're going to get it with the remote bombs. That is the plan, folks. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Right, now that all the remote bombs are in play, uh, the last thing to do is to just bring the horde over to me. And the majority of them must be in the house at this point because I'm not seeing too many of them at the moment. But uh, trust me folks, it won't take that long to get them all over here. Yep, stamp to come out in large numbers now, so here we go, they are on route. I will make a point of trying to take quite a number of them out as they are uh, heading to my position. And this area right here is fantastic. Although it's a reasonably large opening, for some reason they tend to get to that area there and then just run around a little before they eventually start uh, heading up to where I am. So I'm just going to take full advantage of uh, this at the moment. Truth be told, I could have actually set one or two remote bombs down there as well and uh, would have taken out a few of them too, but uh, ah, I'm just choosing to do it this way. Right then, folks, I can see I've got uh, quite a reasonably large number of them up on the top level now, so they're going to get it. Very nice. Um, truth be told, I maybe should have placed more of the remote bombs nearer the front and less at the back, but never mind. Still done a pretty good job, and... This horde is done. <laughs> right, folks, the fourth and final run from location two, I have entitled Smoke Bomb Method. And basically, folks, it's all about gunplay, but just with one smoke bomb placed in a very specific spot. And a lot of people might be thinking that I'm going to throw one at the very bottom here. I'm not. I'm just looking to get off the bike and throw one at the very top. It's just to slow them down a touch, and not only that, what it also does is basically allows me to get off a bit of gunfire around the area at the bottom here, because they congregate nicely there. And then it just sets them up really nicely here for when they do finally start to get through. And I think this is a pretty damn effective method, just for the sake of one small bomb. So 
like not too many of them left now folks so this uh, video is just about done but as you can see folks this uh, location that I've discovered how easy does it make the Beaver Marsh rest stop port um, it really is uh, a bit of a game changer as far as I'm concerned not that it's the most difficult of hordes to take out anyways but if there is anybody who is struggling with this horde I've just shown two fantastic areas where you really can make life very easy for yourself. And that's it folks. Thank you so much for watching the video and I hope you all enjoyed it. Take care.